Hi guys, it's Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a Makara orchid. Uh, this is an awesome cutter set I designed because this is a really small orchid that comes in clusters, so it's great to use as fillers in your um, sugar flower arrangements to, do, to give height and volume and kind of like fluffiness. I love it. I'm a big fan of my filler flowers. So we're going to walk through all the steps to make the flower and the buds and assembling it. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. So to start off, uh, we're going to make the center of our flower, uh, the head and the throat. And what I've got here is a Vanda orchid set. Um, you can get these, Nicholas Lodge carries them, but it's just lovely silicone things. So we've got that guy and then a little bit of white gum paste since I'm doing a pink orchid today. And you just want to take a little blob of your white, get off my fingers. And then you're just going to open it, kind of pinching the top and the bottom to open it up. Shove that little guy in there. And then you can just use your finger or a nail to kind of pull off any excess that there might be. Just kind of pat it to make it nice and pretty and smooth on the top. And so then I'm going to grab some 26 gauge white wire. And we're going to put a little shepherd's hook in it. So it's kind of taking the tip. Bending a little shepherd's hook like that. I like to use egg whites when I'm working, so I'm gonna dip just the head in the egg whites just to moisten the head. And then going from the back, kind of sticking it into the front and gently pulling back to hook it into the gum paste. Go ahead and smooth everything back down. And then once again, open to open it, squeeze north to south, top to bottom, and then pop that little guy out. You see, you've got that nice impression. I always say it looks like some sort of weird, like, bug nose. And then just before you're done, just kind of pinch the ends down just to make sure it's a ni nice, neat transition onto your wire. And you want to let this guy dry for a few hours, if not overnight. I tend to make a bunch of these all at once um, because you can store them for any length of time. And that way, whenever you want to make an orchid, you've got the snoot. Um, I've got one that's already been drying. So we're going to continue on and make our throat. And so for that, I'm going to use a slightly darker pink than what I'm going to use for the petals. It's nice and hot pink. I love pink. And so we just need that guy up. A little bit of Crisco on your workspace so it doesn't stick to your hands. And you want to roll these by hand because what you're trying to do is um, have it be thicker in the center and thinner towards the edges. So I kind of go all the way around like that. I'll pick this up so you guys can see what it's got. We're done. Just trying to build a little bit of a mound in the center. So you guys can kind of see like there's just that slightly thicker bit in the middle because that way we can pull out the detail of our center. And then it's the gingerbread lady is the piece we're gonna use. That's what I think it looks like is a gingerbread woman. And then putting the head on that thicker spot. So the thicker spot is running this way, kind of following this line. That's where the thicker spot is. Let's cut this out. like such. And then you'll grab your pedal pad and your ball tool. Okay. And then I start by just lightly tooling the, what I call the skirt part. Just get a little bit of a ruffle. And then what I'm trying to do with her arms is I'm actually really trying to cup them so I'll kind of press my ball tool in the center. And kind of do it in a circular motion to get it nice and opened and cupped. Sometimes I'll switch to a bigger, a bigger ball. There we go. Just to get that nice open cupping. So you see like that. I always say it's like. From here, you want to use some tweezers and lining up from this side, kind of pinch from top to bottom and then go from the other side and pinch 
the same thing top to bottom and then you can kind of squish them together. That kind of gets the, um, the little pollen places. And then from here, all you want to do is just fold her in half, make her do a sit up. Crunch. She's got abs. Check out those abs. So it actually almost sits like that. And then you'll grab your dried head, put a little bit of egg whites just here where her head would be. We'll grab our pre-dried little snoot and just go right through the center like that. So it's kind of like giving her, like she, she's kind of got a neck right now and we're just gonna give her a big head. And thread that guy down. And then I'll use this little extra bit, I'll just kind of blend onto that dried, the dried center. Just like that. And then a little piece of egg crate foam is actually the best thing to dry these in. I do let these dry for several hours because you want them to be nice and stiff. And usually when I'm going through, because I want it to sit 90 degree angle like that, kind of, kind of coming forward a little bit, I don't go center, I'll go right above where the middle would be and I'll just thread this all the way through. And sometimes you just gotta mess with it a little bit to get it to sit the way you want. There we go. Just so you can see, you've got the cupping of the hands and then the kind of straight out 90 degree angle of the skirt. And then you just let that guy dry overnight or for a few hours, depending on where you live. It could only be like some places I've been like 20 minutes. It's stiff enough to work with, but I usually say give it a couple of hours. And then now we're ready to make petals. All right. So now we're gonna get started with our petals. And like all orchids, um, Makara orchids have five petals, um, but something that's a little bit different from them uh, for this type of orchid is that the hands, I would say like the jazz hands that go at 10 and two are the smaller petal, whereas the other, the three is gonna be the larger petal. So you've got these two. So that little guy is gonna be the two petals for think of it as your left and right hand. This guy is gonna be your feet and your head. So we'll get started rolling out. Um, I love this board. This is Nick Lodge's cell board uh, because it's got five grooves and so you have to roll out a lot less, which that's always the worst part about making sugar flowers is rolling. So I've got my pink gum paste and I'm gonna go ahead and roll it into a snake and kind of push it in about two thirds the way up is where I like to start. And then using a rolling pin, let's kind of start by working it back and forth a little bit. And then you really kind of want to do long, smooth strokes. You don't want to sit here and like do that. A, it's really bad for your wrist, and then you end up with inconsistent thickness through your petals. So just think, long, smooth strokes. What you're looking for is you'll be able to start to see the grooves. If I put a shadow, sometimes you can see, oh, there we go, like just right there, how you can start to see the grooves coming through the board. That's how you know you're getting to the right thickness. Orchid petals are slightly thicker than, say, a peony or a dahlia petal. So you don't have to work quite so hard with this one. So you roll it. You want to release it so you've got your nice veins. And I'm going to go ahead and do my three to start off with. You see I go about three quarters of the way up with the vein. And then one. And then for the third one, because I want to have a left and a right foot, you see one side is slightly bigger than the other. This is me being completely mental, <laughs> like people can see this. But I'm just going to turn my cutter over and cut one so that when you come over here, now you have a left foot and a right foot. I'm going to do the same thing for the hands. So three quarters of the way, one straight up. Then I'm gonna turn. So you have a left and a right again. That's a completely extra step that I like to do, but I think it makes a difference. Um, I think it makes a difference. And then for your head, like that. 
And so then we're gonna switch to 28 gauge wire for these. Um, they're fairly small pedals and you want them to be pretty flexible so you don't need a heavy gauge wire. So once again, 28 gauge cut into thirds. You wanna feed your wire about halfway up the pedal. You can go all the way up the vein if you want to. I did on that one, um, but you don't have to. And then just very gently kind of pinch the edge like that. And so on and so forth. I always like to hold the pedal between my, my thumb and my middle finger on my left hand because that way I can actually feel where the wire is going on both sides. It saves me from like punching through. So you'll do that for all five pedals. I won't bore you guys by doing all of them right now. And then you're gonna grab your veiner. Right there, it's got a great texture. And when you texturize these, you wanna put the vein side down. So the side that has the vein in it goes down in your mold, like so. I try to keep it closer to the bottom so you've got that nice indentation. And press that guy over, give it one good press. And then you have this really awesome texture that looks great once you dust it. So then from here, the other nice part about these orchids is it's all the same step on all five petals. You don't have to do anything different for other petals. So we're gonna grab our petal pad. You're gonna flip it so the textured side is facing down, so vein side up. And then using our smaller ball tool, start from the base and you're just doing the edge. So I'm completely on the petal. So I'm only bending it back. I'm not really ruffling it. Just so you curl it back a little bit. So you can see it kind of is, is curling back. Then my favorite thing, spoons. You're gonna rest these on the back of a spoon. If you can find these ones that have a, um, a little bit of a groove right here, you see how it kind of pushes back. It's, that's my preferred one for doing orchids because it forces the very bottom to bend back even more. But you're just gonna take this guy, push it in, and then kind of pull it over the top. So you see down here right at the base, how it starts to kind of curl right there. And I use my tweezers just to kind of like extra push. And it looks really cool once it's dried. And you wanna bend your wire back. I forgot to do that. Come here. So you can just kind of sit there and hold with your tweezers, bend the wire a little bit so it stays down in that little crevice and then set it aside to dry and do that for all five petals. So now that all of our pieces are dry, see I've pulled my five petals out, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our flower. So I've got my throat here, nice and dry. And I start with my hand, so your left and right hand. I always kind of arrange my petals in a star shape like this so I know which one to use. So I'll start with that side. You wanna go right down to the base, as close as you can, and I'm using half width white floral tape. I always start the taping a little bit away and then I'll slide it up like that. And then I'll grab my left hand, kind of bend it back a little bit. So you've got, I always say it's bunny ears, creepy bunny. And then I will tape all the way down for this because I want that wire stationary. Um, a lot of times I see people will try to do all five petals at once without taping the wire down and they move around and they annoy me. So I always go all the way down after I get my, I think they're called dorsal petals, the bunny ear petals, left and right hand because then you can kind of straighten them out if you need to and kind of put them in their home. I'm like, yep, that's where you live. Ha, you can adjust your little, like that. And so then the next step will be putting on the head. So I'll once again kind of bend that guy back a little bit. Come here. And placing it as close to where the hands are as I can.
and I'll kind of tape down towards it. Do any adjusting you need to make sure it's in the middle. Not quite in the middle. So I'm always checking back to front just to make sure the petals line up well. Like such. And then I'll do my feet. So starting with that side. Once again, kind of bending it back over my my fingernail. Taping it down so it starts to go that way. So this is the kind of like the five and seven. Or four and four and eight. Four and eight sounds better. <laughs> and then you'll do the other side. Make sure you like where everything is kind of positioned. Like such. And then go ahead and tape it all the way down. And then you can kind of go ahead and just bend, bend forward. Adjust anything you need to. And there you go, you got a Makara Orchid. Ready for some dusting. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to assemble a cluster. You can always use an individual orchid like that by itself, but I like doing them on, um, on actual branches of orchids. So we're gonna make some buds next and then show how to assemble a full branch. Whee! All right, so to make our bud, I've got some very pale green gum paste here that I'm just gonna kind of shape into a beaked, weird little teardrop, I guess is what I would call that. They look like alien heads is what I always think of them as. So kind of making your alien head, I bend it over my thumb to get that that curve to it. And then I'll take, uh, this is 20 gauge green wire. Once again, we're gonna put a hook in the end, but I leave this hook a little bit more open like that and a little bit longer because it's such a big piece of gum paste. Go ahead and dip the head in my egg whites. And I'm coming from the bottom like that. You're gonna go in and then you're gonna hook up and spin so that the nose is kind of facing up and the hook of the wire should be right in that big thick part. And so then using your fingers just to kind of once again smooth it to the wire like that. And then I'm gonna use a wheel tool to do the, um, the kind of the lines on this. So you're only drawing for the, the head pedal and the feet pedal. So I start by the underside so that the curve, so you can see the curve, that's gonna be the underside. So I'll start by using my wheel tool and just kind of splitting that underside in half like that. And then I'll go to the top and this is just kind of like eyeball, make a little Y. And then pull that guy back all the way to the back. Like that. And then you've got your little orchid bud. And you can make these, um, usually the Makar orchids tend to have um, three to four buds on the end of a spray. Um, and they go in varying sizes. So the closer to the tip they get, the smaller they'll be. So you can see I've got some that I've already made and kind of taped up just to show you the size comparison. So that's kind of smallest, medium, large. The closer they get to where the flower is, the larger they will be. And also they'll have more color. So if I was gonna go and dust this, I would put a lot more pink on this um, and a lot more green on the smaller ones. And so then now we're actually ready to assemble our spray. I'm gonna use my, my dried heads. As you see, I've already gone through and put some white tape on these. Um, with Macar orchids, all of their stems going out to the buds are actually white. It's kind of a cool thing but you do want to have green tape to tape them together. So for this, I'm just gonna use full, full size tape. 
And I'm just gonna start, it's kind of like gauging your own. There you go. That looks like a good place to start. And then I go down about an inch and I will add my next, my next guy. Go down about another inch and I'll add my third. So you see, I, it really starts to look like some sort of weird Hydra alien thing. And so then you can add as many flowers to these as you want. I tend to stick with like two or three, um, but it's, it's once again, it's up to you and you can spread the buds out to make the spray longer. But once you're ready, you'll just grab your flower and kind of keep going in a, that spiral motion. So once again, it's about an inch. I'll go right there. And even just with one flower, it looks really nice. But then, so if you were adding a second flower, you go here. So it's always kind of side to side. If you know you're doing this freestanding, you can go in an actual spiral all the way around. Um, but usually for me, I'm putting these in clusters or in sprays that are next to a cake surface. So I don't wanna have a random flower facing the back. And so then once you've got it all assembled, you're ready to dust and make it pretty. I've got one finished with uh, three flowers, three buds and three flowers, just so you guys can see just how awesome they look when they're done. Um, a little tip I always say for dusting orchids, especially the Vanda orchids, if you look right here, I use um, Super Pearl Luster Dust just on the inside part of the petal. It makes it look lighter and um, just it gives it like this internal light that I think looks great. But all orchids have a slight shiny finish to them, so always brush at least a little bit of luster dust on your orchids. I find that just using um, Super Pearl is perfect. But there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make Vanda orchids. Um, the cutters are available on sugarworks.com. And happy flower making. <laughs>